Thank you, Jesus. You're a way maker. And we appreciate you. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Can we say that together? Cry way maker, say. Miracle. Promise keeper. Let's declare it together. Waymaker. Waymaker. Yeah. Miracle worker. Oh my. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are. You are here. Turning lives around. I worship you. Worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. Our lesson tonight will be summarized by our pastor, Pastor Brown. Here you have. Amen. We reverence God and thank him for being here this evening and certainly want to thank our superintendent, Brother Collins, and to all of our teachers and all of you God's sons and daughters. Good to be in the Amen. opportunity Amen. to study the word of God one more time as we prepare for fifth Sunday in September, September 29th, um, faithful in consequences. Amen. And uh, I know you all have heard the expression, sunshine Christians. Amen. A faith belongs to sunshine. <laughs> and everything is going well in their lives. But as surely as you live, there are going to be consequences. Mm. And there are going to be situations that might tempt you to go back on your promise to God and your commitment to his work. And so regardless of what you're dealing with, the Lord expects from you, or expects yeah, from you and for you to be faithful. Amen. Because what is the one thing you can say about God? He's faithful, He's faithful. to us. Yeah. Always. Always. God is faithful. God is faithful faithful. You can depend on God. Yes, you don't have to wonder where the sun is going to come up in the morning. <laughs> Did God have an overnight change of mind and decide to bring it up in the West? No. God <laughs> is faithful. Amen. And he sets things in order. And of course our dog book says one more chance and uh, amen. This is one more of many. Yes. Uh, chances that God has given them, but uh, Us. somebody said to me when I was a youngster, "Say even iron, we're out." <laughs> you all understand that expression? Yes, yes sir. That uh, even iron, we're out, and you come to a point where um, God would just say, uh, I'm through. Mm. You can keep coming to church, you can keep praying, and you can keep uh, quoting scripture, uh, but I'm through with you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. 
And some people still carrying on. Wait a minute. Saul was still carrying on like he was king. Mm. <laughs> Samuel had already told him, God say he threw with you. Mm. And so, and he fought to the end. <coughs> Even though he was fired. Yeah. He's fighting like he was still in office. Mm -hmm. But God had fired him. This, this lesson is a continuation, as has already been said by Superintendent of last week's lesson, even the scripture text is just a continuation. We read the A portion of the verse last week, and we start with the B portion of the verse this week. And so immediately after what has been said, uh, the, the discouragement that was brought to the people by the uh, 10 spies, uh, encouragement that was trying to be given to the people by Joshua and Caleb and the people are afraid they so afraid they can't trust God and when people are afraid and their faith has left them they'll say but you don't understand but you don't understand what I'm up against but you don't understand who I'm dealing with, but, but you don't understand what my trials are. I don't have to understand them. I know God. Mm. And with God, all things are possible. And when God say all, he don't leave nothing out. There's nothing that God uh, cannot do. And so here's this continuation. Uh, they, after they threatened to stone uh, Moses, and Aaron, because of the report, when Caleb and Joshua got up to defend their part, the minority part of the report, they threatened to stone them. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, the church, uh, if it would get right with God and get on message, it's going to make some enemies. Amen. We already have enemies, but if we get on task, one, one thing right now, we are tolerant. I think I said to you all that Dr. E.B. Hill, um, when he was preaching at the Pleasant Green Baptist Church here in St. Louis in a revival, said that the problem with the 21st, uh, it was the 20th century church at that time, he said, we ain't doing nothing nobody want to kill us for. Amen. We going along to get along. Amen. But if we stand on the word of God and tell people, you can't come to God and continue to practice your homosexuality. <laughs> you can't come to God and serve God as a deacon or a preacher and continue to practice your art of adultery. Amen, sir. Amen. See, I thought I was going to talk about one thing. <laughs> But there's a whole list of stuff Amen. that God don't like. Amen. And though he letting you run around in his work, you're not going to fulfill your part of his work until you first repent and try to get back right with God. Amen. Amen. I know this might stir some people, but that's okay. The church is salt. Amen. And salt will do something to the food. Amen. The church is light. And I think I told you last week that the preacher at uh, our convention talked about uh, uh, contaminated salt and concealed light. They don't carry out their function. When you're reading the Beatitudes where Jesus said, you the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world, we cannot carry out our function if we are contaminated by unrighteousness and ungodly. Whatever you call it, somebody to be perfect, try your best to be as close as you can. Amen. And then let your light so shine. The, the, the devil will try to make you cover your light. <laughs> I don't want to offend nobody. <laughs> don't you offend nobody. Let the word do it. 
because God will defend his word. So what were God intentions here? Um, first, we have to acknowledge in the 14th uh, chapter, verses 10 through 12, his glorious presence and the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. Uh, there's an there's a uproar going on. And we don't fully comprehend it now, but these people have been waiting to go into the promised land. And all of a sudden they are told that this land is too dangerous, the people are too strong, we are too weak, we can't take it, you ain't gonna get no milk and honey, amen. You, you might well just give up. That there's panic in the camp. There's uh, rebellion in the camp. There are threats in the camp. And I know people are hollering and crying uh, in the camp. And God shows up. Now God's presence has been with them, hasn't it? All along. All along. But this was one of his unannounced presses. <laughs> Amen. Like mama coming home here to time. <laughs> and catching you in the wrong situation. Yeah. Uh, God comes into uh, the camp and enters into the tabernacle of the congregation of the children of Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? Why were they provoking God? How were they provoking God? Yes, sir. Unbelief. Unbelief. Amen. And I thought you were going to start with murmuring and not wanting to get, but, but you didn't hit it on the, on, the, on the head. Unbelief. Lack of faith. Yeah. Provokes God. It literally makes God mad. Uh, it, it, yes, sir. You know what God is really saying to them? Do you know me? Do, do you know me? I was the one that sent Moses to stand before Pharaoh when Egypt was the strongest army in the world and demand of him, let my people go. I was the one that sent the plagues, sent plagues. I was the one that opened up the Red Sea. Mm. And it wasn't enough I opened it up to let you go across. Just to let you know I opened it up. After you got across, I closed it. <laughs> and all of Pharaoh's and his army got drowned. I, I'm the one that gave you water in the desert place. I, I sent bread because you said you were hungry. I sent I sent quail uh, in the evening. I, 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 I talked to you up on the mountain uh, just a few days ago. Amen. And when I was talking to you, you said, whatever Moses say, that will do. Do you know me, God? God is saying to some of us, who you think you're playing with? Who you think you're messing with? Amen. Most of us grew up in neighborhoods where there was somebody in the neighborhood that you didn't mess with for whatever, for whatever reason. And that somebody might have been an old grandma who was known to whoop anybody's children. <laughs> you walk softly by her house. But what I'm trying to say here, God is saying, do you all, Moses, how long am I going to have to put up with these people. How long will it be ere they believe me? What it's going to take for them to believe me? You've seen my glory. You've seen my power. And yet, you operate faithlessly. Mm -hmm. ah. mm -hmm. How many can really say, I've seen God Yes, sir. I've seen God's work. Yes, sir. I've seen oh, yeah. it. And sometimes I'm shaming my faithlessness. Amen, sir. Yes. 
Yeah. Wasn't that Jesus' big challenge to his disciples? Oh, ye. Oh, ye. A little thing. Oh. Hey, amen. Uh, when they woke him up, uh, there, I think it's the fourth chapter of Mark, and it said, Do you care that we don't perish? Jesus got up and looked at him. He said, What's wrong with y'all? What? One thing you ought to know that nothing that controls nature is going to overpower you as long as I'm with you. That's why you got to keep Jesus on board. Amen. Keep him, keep him close by. Amen. And he will. But, but it, it, they, they will react uh, faithlessly. Uh, I, I made a promise to them. And I was ready to give them this land of promise. I, I talked to you up on Sinai. Uh, I begged y'all to listen to Moses. And, 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 and you still refuse to believe. Amen. You know, uh, some children, you have to whoop. I know that's... There's a statistic that said whooping don't work. Yes. Amen. I'm a testimony against yes, that. <laughs> 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 to those that said it don't work, I'm a testify. And maybe yes. enough of us need to testify yeah, that, yeah. That, 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 that it does. <laughs> that it does uh, uh, work. But, but, but some of them, you know, one child you can tell something and they straighten up. Another one, they can't keep trying. They just inch on, they inch, and they inch. You say, stop, and they inch, and they inch. And you say, stop, and they inch. And, and, and finally, they get to what they're trying to get to. Hey, man, we got a little grand now. She's going on 14 months old. And when she wants something, and she sees she wants it, she'll act like she done forgot it, and she'll be going. <laughs> And you see her easing right back around because she's trying. She think you done forgot that she was trying to get. I'm saying, isn't that the way we are? Yes, sir. And and so what you have to do, you have to give them an incentive. I heard somebody say that. <laughs> give them a little, give them a little incentive uh, to remind them, no, you don't mess with this. Amen. And and uh, well, I saw your hand. A lot of correction stops a lot of foolishness. It does. It does. And 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 I'm gonna say this: along with taking God out of, the, and 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 of course, uh, I be around a lot of people, and sometimes people get on my, but they bother me by saying, "Well, you know, they took prayer out of school, and they didn't take it out of the home. Right. They didn't take it out of the church." And you really didn't take it out of school. They just think you can't formally pray in school. Because <coughs> as long as they're giving those uh, law rhythm tests, they're going to be praying in school. <laughs> Amen. Even in biology tests, they're going to be praying, Lord, help me. What's an amoeba? <laughs> 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 There's going to be prayer going on. But I'm saying to you, let's stop uh, using things that the world has done as cop out for us not doing what we supposed to do. Amen. We supposed to still raise children who respect, honor, uh, and obedient to others. I will smite, smite, amen, them with the pestilence and disinherit them. All right. Amen. I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them and will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. And I, I want y'all to know, this ain't the first time the Lord has said this to Moses. All right, he said it to him at Sinai after he came back down off that mountain. He said, why don't you let me just get rid of these folks? Yeah. And you and your family, I'll raise them up and make the nation that I'm trying to make. And Moses interceded there. And here the Lord says, I'm going to disinherit 
what, what does it mean to be disinherited? What, what is the, I, I, I just think that's one word we need to have some understanding of, to be disinherited. Yes, sir. That all privileges that you receive from a, a parent okay. are all for God. Okay. All right. That, that's, you, you got it. It's, it's what you would have received from them. Um, you no longer have access to that. If your parents were people of notoriety and financial well-being, you no longer had access to all those things you had access to uh, before they disinherited you. Also, disinherited means you won't get the promise of what I was going to give you yeah. afterwards. Yeah. I mean, you, you, done, you done lost. Uh, when the will is read, Will's name won't be read. <laughs> Amen. Uh, when Malcolm's will is read, Will's name won't be read. So, <laughs> so I, I, I'm, I'm trying to say disinherited. Now, what is the thing? What I think God had promised them? Canaan. 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 My presence in all your situations. Your, my protection. My provisions, hallelujah, my promises. I'm going to disinherit you. He, well, he didn't say I'm going to disinherit you. He said to Moses, let me send the pestilence. That way, they, you don't have to worry about them dying, you know, one or two every year. I'll just wipe them out. Quick. Amen. I'll say something to just, amen. You wake up in the morning, they be gone. <laughs> amen. And listen, uh, to some people, it might uh, be to their favor. Say, yeah, Lord, get rid of my enemy. Because these people were not only enemies of God, they were enemies of Moses. Amen. They were enemies of Moses. Yeah. Let me say this. Anybody that threatened to take your life more than once in your presence mm. is not your friend. <laughs> I'm just trying to establish that they are enemies of Moses. But in verse 13, Moses said unto the Lord, you can do this because you God. Let me, I'm paraphrasing. Can't nobody stop you. And after you do it, ain't nobody got nothing to say about you doing it. But Lord, I want you to just consider one thing. If you do this, the Egyptians who you so meticulously tore apart and destroyed to prove a point. Mm -hmm. They're going to denounce you because they're going to say you had the power to bring them out, but you didn't have the power to take them in mm -hmm. and to get them to where you said you're going to take them. And, and, the, and Moses said to the Lord, then the Egyptians shall hear it, for thou broughtest us, this people, in thy might from among them. And the Egyptians going to talk. Amen. Now they got already a lot to talk about, all the stuff you did, but they want some negative stuff to talk about, about you. Amen. And if you do this, the Egyptians are going to talk. And they're going to tell all your enemies and all the enemies of your people that their God Ain't who y'all think he is. All right, man. Amen. And there are people right now saying that about our God. Ain't that, right. that he ain't who we claim him to be. And he, he can't do. And, 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 and here is the, the thing with God. See, if God would just give me you know, a little corner on that power, I'd show the world <laughs> that he ain't nothing to play with. <laughs> So he know not to trust that in him. <laughs> but God is patient, y'all. Huh? Somebody ought to say thank you. You know why you ought to say thank you? He was patient with you. Every one of us are the recipients of the patience of God. Yes, sir. God must have clothed himself because if you if the average person looks on it, 
they, they died. So All right. he must have he must have changed himself in a form that obviously didn't kill Moses. Okay. That, there's no record, if you read this, of God's physical presence. Okay. He's speaking to him. All right. And he can speak to your mind. Oh, yeah. You know, yes, from the throne. Mm -hmm. Right? And if, if that ain't working, he'll send one of the guys, you know, Gabriel or Raphael or one of them. Michael. <laughs> but when you see them, no, you don't want him to send Michael. No. <laughs> you don't want no warfare. <laughs> Michael would be a warrior. He come with one purpose in mind, and he come with that sword already drawn back. But anyway, I, 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 I'm exaggerating you all uh, about that. About But Michael is, whenever you read about him, he is the Lord's yeah. warrior. And uh, when, when the Lord wanted to uh, get the body of Moses, he didn't send it Gabriel to make no great pronouncements. <laughs> Amen. He sent Michael. And when Satan saw Michael, he tried to argue with him. And scripture reads you. So he didn't say nothing to the devil. He just took him. Amen. I ain't standing here arguing with you. I wasn't sitting here to argue with you. But I got the power to do what I came to do. And we don't see nowhere where the devil tried to stop him do. <laughs> All right, so that's another discussion. But, but here, uh, uh, we don't see the presence of God, but we do see God talking to Moses and saying to him, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. In other words, the Egyptians are going to tell the inhabitants of this land. They're going to tell inhabitants of Canaan. They're going to tell uh, uh, all of the inhabitants of this region that their God ain't what he said he is. And their God ain't as powerful as he think he is. And let me say this. Uh, you don't need to challenge God to find out about his power. Amen. But you're going to find out something you don't want to know. <laughs> Amen. Because his power, and we don't talk maybe enough today about his power and his awesomeness and, 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 and how just his presence can make people flee in fear because of the might of, of who he is. For they have heard that Thou, Lord, art among this people. Amen. That one thing can't deny. Everybody know they're your people. And everybody know you hang out with them. You hang out with them in the morning in a cloud. You hang up with them in the night in a pillar of fire. You, you just hanging out with them. So they, they can't deny you, and you can't deny them. They're your chosen people. And thou, Lord, art seen face to face. You communicate with them. Now we know, of course, biblically we are told that God don't really, no man can see God's face and live. The only man that we have record of that did see God was Moses. And the Lord let him see his hand apart. Amen. So this face to face means God deals with you directly. Not necessarily that you see God directly, but God deals with with you directly. In fact, he said to the other people, I talked to y'all. Dream, vision. <laughs> but Moses is the only one that I talk directly to. So you're, you're, you're right, Brother Malcolm, he uses dreams, he uses visions. Sometimes he'll use a donkey, mm. he, whatever he needs. He said, I talk to you. But Moses is my chosen man. And I come to him uh, directly. And, and, and so, uh, and that thy cloud standeth over them, thou goes before them by day, time, and a pillar of a cloud, and in a pillar of fire by night. Lord, your reputation is on the line. Your reputation is on the line as the God of Israel. It's already been established. He's known for his presence among his people, for having seen them face to face, and for his special protection of his property as a cloud and as a pillar of fire. So the report is out 
that these are your people. If anything happened to them, the word is going to go forth that you are not the almighty God. That you are not who you say you are. You're not the most high. So Moses was allowed to talk to God in a way that probably nobody else had talked to God before. His revelation occurred strictly on his terms and are unlike anything that any other so-called God is able to do for their people. You've already proven yourself. You already got a good name out there. Don't, don't, Lord, don't, don't, don't mess it up. <laughs> Amen. Don't, don't mess it up. Uh, what a plea. What a, what an intercession. Amen. Uh, and I'd like for somebody to pray for me when I'm about to make a disastrous decision like that, that God won't slay me. Uh, because the, the fact, the people knew better. Right? They just chose to do different than they knew. Verse 15, 16, now, if thou shalt kill all these people as one man, that's what that pestilence is going to do, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land which he swore unto them, therefore he has slain them in the wilderness. You know, people can put a spin on anything. Amen. They, they can put a spin on anything. They can make good things look bad. They can make the bad things look good. They can put a spin on it. And so Moses just saying to the Lord, Lord, if you do this thing, uh, I ain't trying to tell you what to do, but if you do this thing, it's going to impact not only the image that Israel have of you, but the image that the people that have heard about you have of you. Yes, sir. Regardless of what Ever a thing is created for, there's always an enemy to develop an evil way to sure. use it. Sure, sure, sure. Good, well, the, 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 what did Paul say? Don't let your good be evil spoken of. Oh, yeah. Amen. The real uh, truth that, be hey, that you did the right thing. That's right. That, that, thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Everything that's good is not right. I say it now. Huh. Amen. So everything that's good is not right. Make sure you're doing the right thing. And what what uh, Moses kind of is arguing with the Lord is here, uh, what you're saying you want to do is the right thing, Lord, but the way you say you want to do it just ain't good. It ain't, it ain't, the, it ain't the good way to do it. Because if you do it this way, then you're going to uh, receive an image uh, that you don't want to have of you, uh, that you are God that starts things that he can't stop finish, that you bring people out and you can't take them in to where you say you're going to take them to. So the news of such a massive destruction of Israel will quickly get around the surrounding nation. Mm -hmm. Jericho already knew, didn't he, about who God was. Yes, he did. And when Rahab uh, entertained the spies, look, listen, Rahab <coughs> said to them, we know of your God. Yes, sir. And we know what he can do. So when y'all take the city, because if your God is with you, you're going to take the city. When you take the city, remember me and my family. Uh, because you, the Lord, when the Lord is on your side, people ought to expect. Remember when Jesus would go into the temple, the scripture says they watched him to see what he would do. Why did they watch and see what he would do? Because they knew he was going to do something. Jesus couldn't see a situation that needed something done about it, and he didn't do something. Likewise, our God has a reputation of being able to bring out, to bring in, to build up, to tear down, to fix, to, to scramble up, whatever needs to be done. God has a reputation of being able to do it. And let me just say this, by some of our lives, we make people believe a lot about God. All right, sir. All right. We make people believe. And, and, and I, I'll use the illustration of, you remember the, the Mount of Transfiguration? Okay. When the man brought his lunatic, that's what the scripture yeah. says, son to his disciples, 
And he said, I brought him to your disciples, but they couldn't help him. And what did that do? That cast a doubt on Jesus. Because <coughs> the next thing out of man's mouth was, if, if. you can. <laughs> and of course, it didn't take long, Jesus straightened it out. He said, if I can. <laughs> the guy said, Lord, I believe you. Help, Help thou my unbelief. And we have created unbelief in people because of our, not only our personal doubt, but they see our lifestyles. They see our behavior. Amen. We, we, we talk about faith, but we live like doubters. Y'all don't hear me. We talk about faith, but we live like doubters. We, we shout on Sunday, and the doctor tell us something Monday, and all the shout and the Holy Ghost gone. Amen. Is that right or wrong? Amen. Is it our flesh? Amen. It's our faith. Amen. It's not our flesh, it's our faith. And, and, and here's what happens is, the flesh talks to the faith. Don't listen to the flesh. Yeah. Listen to your faith. Yes, sir. Yeah, I was just going to say, it's not very much spiritual warfare being waged. Well, yeah. it's been waged against the people of God, but yeah. we ain't oh, fighting yeah. back. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know how to fight back. There you go. I mean, I, that's exactly where I was. Is that what you're trying to say? Ignorance, yeah. Yeah. Ignorance. Half of us wouldn't know spiritual warfare if we look right at it. Well, <laughs> and guess what? We're fighting it every day, y'all. Yeah. yeah. We are fighting it. I told you all, I think it was late spring or something like that, that I felt that my family had encountered spiritual warfare. It was attacking at every corner. You know, grandkids. Everybody was being attacked. And I sent a text. We got a family uh, email, and I sent a text to them. I said, we are under attack. And it's spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. I said, so we can't look to human resources <laughs> to get us out of this. Now, now, I could stay here today and say, the, 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 the war is over. The battle is over. Uh -huh. There's another battle coming. Oh, yeah. But the Lord gave us victory in that battle because, like you said, I recognize it. I recognize this is spiritual warfare. Amen. And you have been given the tools to deal with the enemy. Amen. Amen. But what good is a gun and you don't know how to use it? Amen. And, and I'm, and I'm going to say this. I heard what you said, but you ain't got no bullets. You got bullets. No, no, I ain't no boy. Said that. I said, we we have the bullets. We in word. fact, we got everything. In fact, know. we give the devil bullets. Amen, amen, amen. And he turn around and shoot us with. Shoot us with. <laughs> Hello. Amen. I doubt gives him instruments. Yes, Lord. Of how to come against. That's why he's the master. He wants to create doubt in us. Mm -hmm. Didn't he do it in Eve? He said, you're not going to die. <laughs> Did God say? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was no scripture too. But you've got to know the meaning of scripture because he never will quote the whole scripture. What do you know? <laughs> he quoted scripture on Jesus, didn't he? Yeah. In that wilderness. Jesus right back on him, though. <laughs> but he only quoted part of the scripture. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Jesus knew what back and let me just say this, some of you all may be in spiritual warfare right now. That's why it seems like everything is falling apart and all that you work to build up. But like everybody, even within your family, the, the, all the peace that, that once existed is gone everything. That's spiritual warfare. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And it can only be fought with spiritual weapons. Amen, sir. The word of God. That's it. Prayer. Yes. yes. The Holy Ghost. Yes. These are the weapons of our warfare. Somebody said, well, the Holy Ghost ain't no weapon. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, yeah. 
He's going to direct us. Oh, Amen. Wow. He is a. Yes, sir. Consistency. Huh? Consistency in what you just mentioned. Okay. Is your defense. Yes. You said praying, reading the word. Our problem is we aren't consistent in No, these that's things. correct. That is correct. Yeah, we, we are panic, or should I say crisis prayers. Amen. You want to hear a prayer. Orientated. You, you want to hear a prayer. Let a Christian get in trouble. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We are crisis prayers. Oh, yeah. Now, I want you to know God answers our prayer. <laughs> but he don't want to just hear from you. Do you have, anybody have relatives that you only hear from when they're in a crisis? Call me sometime just to see how my day goes. Yeah. Now God is going to respond to your prayer, but, but you, you've got to be consistent, Jeff. That's a good, uh, uh, and, and the key to consistency is here's another word that a lot of church folks feel like you're jumping on when you say it, commitment. Oh, yeah. Oh, you said it? You ain't got nothing. Huh? Without that, you don't have anything. Because let me tell you this. God know whether you're real in this thing. And you've got to make commitment. And let me say this. Everybody don't have to understand your commitment. But as long as you and God are on the same wavelength. Amen, sir. As long as you know that God is pleased with the level of commitment that you have made to him. And, and, and I, I dare say, I dare say this, none of us have given God too much commitment. Say it now. Amen. In fact, I'm not sure you can. Say it. <laughs> well, I go to Maybe church every God time the door open. Well, let me say this, Anna moved into the church. <laughs> After her husband died, Amen. reading about, about the birth of Jesus, the second chapter of, of, of Luke, she, she spent her life, Amen. and I'm not calling anybody to do that, but I am calling you to commitment. I'm calling you to consistent prayer. I'm calling you to consistent habitual reading of your word. It'll strengthen you for when those days come and when the enemy when your name pops up on his radar, and you might think you're going to get away from him, but he know how to find you. Amen. He got a GPS on you. <laughs> and it's sending a signal. But when he show up, have the Holy Ghost sitting there with you. Yellow. You got to have your stuff on. Yellow. All right. We... <laughs> Listen. And now I beseech thee, let the power of the Lord, of my Lord, be great. Mm. According as thou hast spoken, saying, the Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression. And when I read this verse, y'all, I have to say, thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Because you are long-suffering. Yes, yes. Amen. And you are great in mercy. In fact, I heard the psalmist say, his mercy endureth yes, forever. Thank you. And he does forgive iniquity. Yes, Thank yes, you, Lord. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. For we all are guilty of iniquity. Yes, Amen. Lord. Yes, sir. Are you either forgiven or the unforgiven? <laughs> Amen. I, I'm, I'm crying out with Paul. There is now therefore. No. No condemnation to those who are in Christ. So instead of God demonstrating the greatness of his power by judging the Israelites for their unbelief and disobedience, Moses pleads with the Lord to manifest his power by showing mercy and in forgiving them of their sins. In so doing, Moses uh, cites the Lord's self-description at Mount Sinai, God said this about himself, to ask that the Lord show great mercy to a very wayward people is indeed a bold request. Moses' intercessory pleading 
is reminiscent of Abraham's concern for Sodom and Gomorrah. Moses pleaded for the people, Amen. prayed for the people, mm -hmm. the very people that wanted to kill him. Amen, sir. Amen. A lot of would say, God say, I'm going to get him. Get him. Go get him. <laughs> get him. <laughs> Amen. But we ought to be praying intercessory prayer even for our enemies. And by no means clearing the guilty. And we not, I'm, not, I'm not asking you to ignore their guilt. Amen. Amen. A lot of people think that because God is merciful that he's ignoring their guilt. No. no. Let me just say this. God can be merciful and get you to. Amen. Y'all didn't hear that. I said God can be merciful and get you to. Yes, sir. At the same time. And, 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 and the way you know that he's merciful is because he didn't get you the way he could have got you. And you know he's merciful. So, so he's saying to him, I'm not asking you to, uh, you know, to act like that they've not done anything wrong. But Moses acknowledges the reality of God's judgment upon the guilty. The impact of one generation iniquity upon the children, upon the third and fourth generation is what God had already said he was going to do in Exodus 20, 4 and 5. Yes, Brother Malcolm. Uh, we, it, it, we get a little crossed up sometimes when God don't actually deal in areas like this here like we expect him to do it. Right. He asked the question, he said, what is it to you if I show mercy to an evil vessel? That's right. You know, That's right. or whatever the case is. That's right. Mind your business. That's right. <laughs> but, you know, and, and, and here's the reality of it. God is waiting on everybody. Oh, oh yeah. Also. But there's a time where the wait is over. Now, can I tell you, I hate to jump it. ahead of the lesson, but the truth is, God's going to show mercy, and he's not going to kill them. But at the same time, he's going to cut out what they've been doing. Amen, sir. He said, if you're 20 years older or older, you won't go into this promised land. Amen. <laughs> If you are fighting age, you will not inherit the promise. Okay, here in Kadesh Barne, the mercy of God will actually be shown to the very next generation. Instead of God visiting the iniquity on the, on the second and third generation, God is going to go from, he's just going to punish the ones who are the leaders. And he's going to bless the next generation. The children of those have rebelled against the Lord and against Moses and against Aaron, that next generation will be permitted to enter into the promised land, according to Numbers 14.31. Verse 19, pardon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Pardon. Say it. Pardon. Yes, sir. Pardons are not justice, whether they are acts of undeserved mercy. Pardons are not justice, but they are acts of undeserved mercy. Say amen. Most of the time, you only get a pardon because you are guilty. If you're not guilty, you don't need a pardon. And so here, he shows mercy. I pardon, I beseech thee the iniquity of this people according unto the greatness of thy mercy. And as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. Lord, it ain't like I'm asking you to do something you haven't done for them already. <laughs> they ain't just started messing up. <laughs> They've been messing up all the way. <laughs> Amen. I know this is the big mess up, <laughs> but they've been messy all the way. Amen. And you pardon them then. Now you're going to really show the magnitude of your greatness by pardoning them now. Amen. 
You know, when I was a kid, Mama used to teach me to beg people pardon. Oh. I didn't know what that meant. Oh. Uh, you were taught to say, pardon me. <laughs> hey, Amen. It would allow me to go by, or allow me to do this, or whatever. Uh, and, and I didn't realize the significance, uh, the magnitude of this word. Amen. But I am the recipient of a pardon. Amen. 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 We are, man. We all are. I've received a, a we pardon. Are. We are. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It didn't come out of uh, the jail in St. Louis, uh, St. We Louis are. County. Amen. Uh, this pardon, amen, don't have nothing to do with the physical life. Amen. It has to do with my eternal soul. Amen. God has pardoned. And the Lord said, yeah, I have pardoned. According to thy word. Amen. I know people don't think and don't give a lot of credit to the word uh, of a preacher or uh, of a prophet or or man of God because that's the nature of our society today. Because people don't believe in God, of course, they don't believe in the servants of God. And even people in the church who believe in God don't really believe uh, in the, the, the power of the servant of God. Amen. Right? And, 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 and the Bible says, uh, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen. And I accept the per I'll accept the terminology righteous person. I'm not hung up on righteous man. I'll accept the, the terminology of a righteous person. But the effectual fervent prayer, that's a real prayer. Yeah. Yeah. A real sincere prayer. Amen. Can have impact. Oh. There, it, there are things that can be changed if the people of God would pray. Amen. I'm talking about sincerely pray. Amen. And some of us have witnessed the, the power of prayer. Hot prayer. Effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man. Hallelujah. And, and that, that it will produce a change. So he says, I have pardoned according to thy word. The Lord responds favorably to Moses' intercession. That's why I tell people, pray for your children. Amen. Pray for your spouse. Yeah. Pray for your friends. Pray for your church. Amen. Pray for your pastor. Yeah, Lord. Pray for the kingdom of God. Because everything in the world is being done to tear his kingdom down. And Amen. we sing that song, Satan, we're going to tear your kingdom down. No, what we're doing is we're stopping God's kingdom from being built. Amen. By what we are not doing. Yes, the nation will be spared the immediate destruction that the Lord had intended to bring upon them. But the unbelieving generation consisting of those individuals who have constantly mm -hmm. grumbled against the Lord. Mm -hmm. and, 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 I, and I'm going to be frank with you, and I, it may sound crazy and strange, but I pray more for people that I know that are always grumbling, discontented, because I know they got God's attention. Y'all don't believe me. No that if you grumble <laughs> and you're discontented God, and you're never satisfied, God, you got God's attention. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I have to pray. I pray hard for them because if if God don't hold himself back, <laughs> amen. Take them out. Amen. People, people that fight against the church. All right. Amen. <laughs> People who resist the gospel. All right. I, I, I was at, well, I'm not going to do that. Not, uh, but but uh, this person that I encountered today was, I think, kind of offended by my presence. And, you know, uh, I had my, well, I had on what I got on now. So the cross was showing and cross on my thing, ring and everything. And uh, uh, what do you want? Still got fish on sale. 
<laughs> now, maybe they were mad about something else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I know that uh, the righteous ought to make the unrighteous uncomfortable. Yes. All right. Now, y'all don't have to, and I ain't calling myself no holier-than-thou person, but there's a difference in trying to live for God and not trying to live for God and be a representative of God. And if you are a representative of God, you automatically are offensive to some people because your presence make them feel like what they are and what they are doing is wrong, even though they already know it's wrong. And so I'm saying to you uh, that, 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 that God uh, says to Moses, I'm going to honor your prayer and I'm going to pardon them. And even though I'm going to pardon them, they ain't going into the promise. Amen. <laughs> pardon, but no promise. Amen. Amen. You ain't going to the promised land. Amen. God will restrict you. Let me say this. If you, if you got restrictions on your relationship with God, God got restrictions on his blessings toward you. Amen. 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 I want y'all to think about that. <laughs> if your relationship with God is not priority, yes. right, yes, yes. All right. it'll, affect, it'll affect God's blessings on you. Amen. And I tell people, I don't believe that because you fell out of the church and you're no longer active in the church, all that, I don't believe you necessarily lose your salvation. Amen, sir. And that's what I believe. Amen. But I believe you lose the blessings. They go with your salvation. Amen. Amen. You wonder why everybody else is driving and you still riding the bus. Y'all ain't hearing me. That level of commitment, raise your level of commitment. You want more, you want more from God? Raise your level of commitment. Amen. Do more for God and you get more from God. Amen. Amen. Uh, Help me, Holy Ghost. So, so he says to them, only Caleb and Joshua will be spared to experience the thrill and the blessings of entering the promised land. Amen. Amen. You pardon, but you ain't going in there. Amen. And when God forgives people, sometimes you think, that 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 that, that, not, that everything is gonna go back identically where it was. It may not necessarily be that way. Amen, sir. You know what? Because you've done things, uh -huh. or you've created barriers, uh -huh. or maybe you have come to a point where you're not as useful to God as you were once were. Anybody? Amen. I I I, I don't want to. Nobody feel like God is not forgiving. He is forgiving. Yeah. But uh, your, your sins and your life, uh, they carry with them consequences. Say it now. I see your hand. Yes, sir. Uh, the Lord forgave them, uh, but then he fulfilled their personal request. That's right. Exactly. Ten yeah. times. Yeah. You know what the Lord said? <laughs> Ten times. Y'all yeah. said, we're going to die in this wilderness. And then, but here's the other side. God said, the first, you all said the first victim we're going to be the little ones. I want you to know, to let you know I'm in charge, you're going to die, but they're going to inherit it. Amen. You know why? Because I'm in charge. I'm in charge. Yes, sir. And then the other penalty that he put on them was, since you didn't believe the spies report, I'm going to add a year to each day to take this day. That's correct. Yeah. The punishment is going to be 40 years representing the 40 days that they were in the land spying it out. They didn't believe. And, and, and you know what the Lord told them after this encounter here? Now you know after this encounter here, uh, he sent a plague and killed the 10. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Who led to rebellion. Mm -hmm. Nobody got off. The 10 spies that went in and said, we can't go up there. Yeah. God said, I don't know about you can't, but you won't. <laughs> yeah, God doesn't know about can't, uh, but you won't. And a, and a plague came into the camp, and they, those ten were the first to die. But Caleb and Joshua were not affected by it. Amen. They may have said, well, it's something we picked up over in that other land. But well, how come they didn't get it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, but I'm saying to you, uh, brothers and sisters, 
that our God is awesome. awesome. He's powerful. Yellow. He's wonderful. But don't think that he don't have the power to deal with you <laughs> and your misconduct mm -hmm. and your lack of faith. Because mm. your lack of faith affects others that may be watching your faith to build their faith. Amen. Yes, you want to say, Brother Jeffrey? We're going to wrap it up. Okay. Let us pray now as never before. Mm, yeah. Lord, we pray for our blessings to be given according to your will. Mm. We see the turmoil in our nation. Mm. Lord God, we're hearing all types of words of denouncement, mm. of rejection. Mm -hmm. But the greatest rejection, God, is not rejecting Washington or rejecting mm. City Hall, but the greatest rejection that plagues our community and our society is rejecting you. Give us a heart to receive you. Please, please. Have mercy please. on all of our elected officials. Have mercy on our nation. Mm -hmm. Have mercy and bless every church that's opening your name and every servant yes, that's yes, trying to do your will. Yes, Strengthen us in these days and time. Lord God, we used to having a good time. We're not used to the challenge. But you yes, said to us that these days would come. Yes. Help us to stand firm. Yes, please, my well, stand yes. sincerely on your word. Yes, Increase our commitment. Yes. And above all, increase our faith. Yes. So that we can trust you the more. Yes. We know what you have done. We know you. Yes. We know you. You're mighty. Yes. You're awesome. Yes. And we praise you for that. And then we thank you for your son. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we cured all of our ills that were brought by sin. That we may be able to do it to the glory of his name, the upbuilding of your kingdom. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pray for somebody this week. Yeah, Lord. In a session. In the hands of my servant. Declare it, declare it!